Hi, I'm Keith Zott, VP of Customer Innovation at Esper, and in today's Fleet Geek session, we're going to dive into Esper's DevOps for devices. Now, DevOps is a very loaded term. I'm going to take a very pragmatic view of how you can approach this no matter where you're at in the journey to DevOps, whether you're a traditional IT op type shop with a dedicated device fleet, or if you're at the other end where you're API driven, cloud to cloud, and you're at the forefront of doing DevOps within your overall cloud infrastructure, as well as for your devices. Important to note, a lot of people view DevOps from the view of the cloud. It's different when you're dealing with devices, and so we'll highlight those nuances through this particular presentation. Hi, I'm Keith Zott, VP of Innovation and Solutions at Esper, and you're watching Fleet Geek. Build your dedicated device fleet your way. All right, let's get going. So the first thing to do is calibrate on DevOps and what it means uh, for devices, right? And so DevOps is a loaded term. You know, I talk to a lot of prospects, a lot of customers. You bring this up and a lot of people get bug-eyed and freak out because this has a lot of implications. When you look at laying DevOps on a team, it means like breaking down barriers and bringing teams together, but it also has implications for roles and people and humans within that organization that can frankly be kind of scary. Now, yes, you can have that kind of impact with Esper's DevOps for devices, but we don't view it as like a hard, fast thing because again, this is a journey that you start out with where Perhaps you're a more traditional IT ops shop. You know, you have waterfall model for how you deliver software. And this is not saying like completely kill and jump to the state where you're pure DevOps, right? Instead, through Esper, what we're doing is letting you pick and choose where you want to be on that journey to give you capability through our DevOps for devices to basically improve your operations, improve your business results, improve your experience of what you deliver through your dedicated device fleet using the Esper platform. Now, the first part that I wanna highlight is a lot of this talk about DevOps is really from a cloud perspective, right? And so these are a set of services in the cloud that you can use DevOps to propagate these changes through stacks in a way that's very uniform. So it's different when you deal with devices. For one thing, the uniformity is not there. You're basically talking about, at the extreme, a bunch of snowflakes of Android devices that are all potentially different. So, frankly, it's much easier in the cloud world to apply DevOps than it is in the tough world of dedicated devices. Um, because there's a lot more considerations that you have to have there. And frankly, it can be very useful to have the DevOps approach when you deal with this world because you don't necessarily know the behavior when you have a mixed fleet of when you push out a change and being able to take a DevOps approach can help you. So let's start out with the extreme and we'll dive into um, very progressive companies that are using DevOps for devices uh, via Esper. So let's start out with the progressive companies. And the key here is what you're doing, and this is a primary activity, is you have an app, right? This app delivers an experience on the device. And that experience is how you drive your business to make money, whether it's an employee using the device, whether it's a consumer. And if you make a change or you push out an update of that app to your fleet, you need to make sure that you nail it. And the worst is when you do what I call press and pray, meaning you push that app update to your entire fleet at once, you have to make sure that it works and it's a very risky move to make, but in the MDM world, when you're doing an app update or MAM, whatever you wanna call it, that is a typical motion that most infrastructure providers give you in order to make these app changes to your fleet. So, the key is, how do you use DevOps to take a staged approach to do it? And that staged approach means that you are cr creating uh, cohorts of devices that you're gathering telemetry from so that you can make sure that your rollout isn't causing problems and worse so 
to the point where you have to roll back. And just so you know, roll back on Android is a pain to do. Our foundation OS actually has a very nifty way to do it that is much smoother than you'll see on a standard Android device. That is in the Foundation Fleet Geek episode, by the way, so go check that out. Um, but you want to avoid this, basically, because this will cost you money, this will cost you heartburn, and just make your life harder. And so using a DevOps approach, uh, you can basically have a very calculated way to roll this out. Now, the best way to do it is if you have a CI-CD build system where you are building your app, and via API, you're basically triggering a rollout of that app. Now, the prerequisite of this is that you have to think about your fleet in chunks, essentially. And that's where the staged approach comes into play. Because what this is built on is the concept of a pipeline. And the pipeline is just what you would think it is. It is organizing your fleet into collections of devices that are called stages, right? And you have these stages sequenced in this pipeline so that when you take this action, you are going stage by stage to perform this operation. So you are progressing this change that you're making to your fleet in a way that is progressive, lowers your risk, gives you the ability to monitor it, and stop the rod if you wish, do a rollback, and give you higher confidence as you increase your blast radius for making that change until finally you're done, right? And so the way that I like to talk about this is you know, using kind of a simple three-stage model. So what you'll do typically is you'll have a validation lab, um, you'll have a set of canaries that are in the real world that are controlled and monitored that are out deployed at customer sites or at particular locations that you have tight control over. And then finally, do your full rollout. If you take this simple approach, you lower your risk greatly because by running it through the validation lab in a controlled environment, you're going to catch the obvious stuff. If you have canaries out there in the real world, then you're going to see what happens when they're actually deployed. And then finally, that gives you the confidence to be able to do the action of the full rollout, which, as you know, if you've done this, never goes perfectly. And so there's a lot of remediation and follow-up that needs to happen, which relates to reporting and making sure that you do that cleanup work to get your rollout completely done. What we see are customers that are API driven that are able to do this by using Esper directly through cloud to cloud communication using our REST APIs, as well as our built-in pipeline service, which is available to you, to basically in an automated fashion drive this. So essentially when the new build appears, it is automatically uploaded to Esper. It is the pipeline is triggered, it's deployed to the validation lab, um, and then it can be automatically promoted through code to the canaries, and finally automatically promoted uh, through code again to the full rollout. Throughout this process, our customers are monitoring the health of each of the stages through telemetry, and through that in an automated fashion can stop rollout, trigger an automated rollback if necessary, and basically have code handle this all with humans monitoring it. We have a lot of customers that do this, and I would contend that Esper is the best infrastructure to be able to provide this, because whether you do it through calling what I call our primitive APIs, where you can do the operations, do the app install, and you do all that tracking work yourself, our APIs enable you to do that. If you want to use our pipeline infrastructure as a service and have us do it for you, that's also available to you as well. So very flexible there. Now, here's where I'm going to change gears. So basically, if you're doing a modern CI-CD automated type build procedure via API, Esper infrastructure is perfect for you. But if you're IT ops, do not let this scare you away. Because our philosophy is this concept of using DevOps and pipelines with stages should be very applicable to you as well. So let's move on to that next. IT ops. Boy, it's a tough role. A um, lot of responsibility. A lot of stuff that you have to deal with. And the developers probably look at IT ops um, as Luddites, if you will, right? But the reality is, is through Esper, 
It's possible, and we've seen this, that the IT operations team can take the lead on DevOps within these organizations. That's because through Esper, through our console, we bring our pipeline functionality to you in a form that is human configurable. So think of this journey that you're taking to DevOps where it's not just about code talking to code, but it's really how you as a human team can organize your fleet to be able to drive a very calculated rollout of an application, a piece of software, right? And so it's the same kind of concept where you talk about defining a pipeline and doing it with stages. And this means that you have to think through how you wanna organize your rollout and you use our console to be able to do it. And so I'll use that three-stage example again where you should have a validation lab, right? And that validation lab probably you own and control. And so through Esper, you can define a pipeline through our console where you define either the group, because we use a group construct, or the individual set of devices that you want to push that application install or application update to as your first stage. So literally through that, you define those uh, sets of groups or devices. And with that, you can trigger the rollout and install or update of that app to your validation lab. And then next, you can work with your customers, right? You know who they are, to find those canaries out in the field that make sense for you, your relationships, your business. And in a sense, you can be the one to monitor that telemetry to be able to determine how is that app rollout going. But the key point is, you control your blast radius, and you have confidence that you've gone through your validation lab, all good. Now you can take it out to your canaries and get some real feedback. And then if that goes fine, finally, you can promote it to the wide rollout. If you want to make this more granular, you can. Um, but the key point here is that from an IT operator perspective, you can separate the definition of that rollout to a, a higher level uh, role, if you will, someone that understands the topology of the fleet, uh, the relationships that are involved when you roll out that piece of software, potentially even the politics too, that go with it. So that way you define it once, and then you can separate the action of doing the app update to the uh, person that executes it because they don't need to think about this topology and organization. Instead, they just need to focus on that app rollout that you have defined the stages and they can execute it very efficiently. And you can have multiple pipelines that you define depending on what you're doing, what you roll out, um, and give you that control, that oversight of it at the management level, and then be able to slice off the execution of it at the proper level within your organization. So this is a great step in that journey to DevOps. This has nothing to do with APIs. It really is done through our console and really lets you see the value of using DevOps so that you can plan your roadmap to automate this in the future and be on that path to DevOps. So this is a great start to that journey that you can take right away through Esper that makes things very easy for you. So let's get the brass tacks on where Esper is right now with DevOps. So what we do is we allow you to do a set of operations. We let you do app install or update. You can do that via the console today. So it goes back to you. You can define those stages. You can have multiple of them depending on your rollout, um, depending on like your um, fleet organization and set those and then have it available for operators to be able to use. Or you can have all this done via API uh, with a much more sophisticated system or anything in between. Uh, you can also do app uninstall as well as reboot. And this is available via API. Now the path that we're on is we're viewing it is that any action that you take with your fleet should be available for you to roll through a pipeline with stages. And so this could also be configuration changes, something as simple that you want to change uh, a sound setting on the device, as an example. Uh, you're pushing a new piece of content out to the device. And also, finally, with our foundation OS, uh, OTA updates that you push out as well, because OTA um, is a very tricky thing and fits very well with the pipeline approach. So through this, our vision is that Pipelines is a core and centralized infrastructure available to all. 
It's not just for the hardcore cloud developer, it's for the IT operator. And so in a way, bringing the power of DevOps to all the different roles that exist within the scope of running dedicated device fleets. So that's what we're driving to achieve. That's the journey and the path that we're also on with you. And so with that, I invite you to join us on that, whether you're a traditional IT operations shop, whether you're a new startup that is completely cloud-based, we have what you need to get started or to nail uh, your DevOps journey, your DevOps execution through Esper. Sign up for our free trial. Check it out.